Hello YouTube, welcome back to Kind Heart Homestead. My name is Ben and I'm up here on our off-grid property in the mountains of Virginia. I'm here at the edge of our field, right where it meets the woods. And the reason I'm here is because I need to find a living oak log that's about six inches in diameter, but I only need a few feet of it. And because it has to be living, that means I need to cut down a living tree. We don't really have chainsaws and all that kind of stuff, which is why I'm here at the edge of the property. What I'm hoping to do is find a nuisance tree or a branch, something that's either too close to another tree for both trees to survive, or some sort of branch like this that grows way down over the, the grass and it like whacks me in the face every time I mow the grass. So I think this might be a suitable candidate not only is this a tree that hits me in the face, but it, the branch also goes to the trunk of a tree that's too close to another oak tree. I would say that the bottom two trunks are touching each other. So that's definitely too close. So I'm gonna get rid of one of those. They are pretty small trees, but I think they meet the minimum requirements of being six inches. So I'm going to cut this tree down. And if you wanna see what I do with it, go ahead and stick around and We'll both be surprised together because I've never done this before, but it involves mushrooms. I cut this trunk a little long, so I'm trying to balance it here on these chairs just to take an accurate measurement and cut it down to four feet. I could have done this over in the woods, but I didn't have my tape measure with me at the time. We recently went to Tuggles Gap, which is a stop along the Blue Ridge Parkway over near Floyd, Virginia. And while we were there, there happened to be 
a mushroom festival taking place. It was called Chantrelle Fest, and it seems to be an annual event themed around foraging for mushrooms. So we stopped there. We were surprised to find a vendor selling kits to grow your own mushrooms. So we bought a kit from him, and it included these instructions. That's what we're following for today's video. The business is called EB Fungi, and they actually sold several different varieties of kits. You could either buy a big brick of mycelium, which would produce the fruiting bodies relatively quickly. What we decided to get was a cheaper kit that actually works longer term. As you can see behind me, I have a four foot piece of oak tree, and it varies from about five inches to three inches diameter. And these instructions actually say we should have a three to four foot in length log, four to eight inches in diameter. So we're pretty close. Basically what we need to do is drill 100 holes in this. Specifically, the instructions say to use a 5 16 inch drill bit and drill the holes an inch and a quarter deep. And that's why I put the electrical tape around the drill bit so I know when to stop drilling down into the wood. So we got a pack of these mycelium inoculated wood plugs. They're essentially tiny little dowels that have been marinated, soaked, infused with the mycelium of the mushrooms that we purchased. And once this is done, we have to wait a year or two for the mushrooms to even come up, but then we might have years of production of mushrooms here on our homestead. So let's get started on this and we'll see how it goes. I drilled 13 holes in a straight line from one end of the log to the other, and then I rotated the log slightly and drilled an offset row of 12 holes. That equals 25, which is a quarter of the amount of total holes that I need. So I repeated that process three more times by rotating the log 90 degrees each time, and then I ended up back where I started. It turns out that not only do we need to put the inoculated dowels into the 100 holes, which is actually pretty difficult to drill through this hard wood, but we have to seal every cut or nicked or exposed piece of the wood with wax. The mushroom vendor was nice enough to sell us these waxes, which I guess he put into this funky mushroom-shaped mold. This is actually getting pretty pliable because it's been out in the sun, but I don't really know how to melt wax. I've never done any wax-based crafts before. Angie mentioned a common method is either to suspend it over a little candle, like a tea light or a sterno, or put it in a crock pot. And while both of those could theoretically be done here, I don't want to waste the electricity, and I don't feel like going through the shipping container to find a crock pot or a candle. So here's my solution. We have this pretty small grill, and we keep this big cast iron griddle in it so we can bake in the grill. I don't know if you know this, we recently were surprised to learn that you can basically do anything in the oven on the grill. Any recipe that calls for baking, you can do on the grill with indirect heat. So there's three burners I put on the side ones, and I'm gonna set a stainless steel skillet right in the middle. And I might even keep the grill open because I don't think this needs much more heat than this. My finger temperature is already melting it. So uh, let's see if we can get this started. All right, I got those burners on. I'm just gonna close it to speed up the melting process, but I don't know how long it's gonna take for this wax to re-solidify once I take it out. So I think I should have the warm grill nearby and I can move the pan on and off. But I'm going to use a couple spoons. Let me show you. These aren't the regular spoons we use for eating. This really long one we kind of use for stirring in a pitcher. This is kind of a serving spoon. Angie reassured me that it's not gonna permanently destroy any of my stuff, but just in case, I'm gonna use the ones that we don't really use for eating. This one is pretty narrow and I'm hoping I can kind of precisely drop basically a teaspoon of wax over each dowel. There's gonna be about a hundred of those dowels. But we also have to worry about the exposed edges where I cut down the log. So there's the one at the base, there's the one at the top, but I also cut a pretty significant branch off. All of that has to be covered, as well as any areas 
or the bark has been scuffed off of the tree. Thankfully, our woods are pretty much untouched by tractors and things like that, so we don't really have a lot of scuffs. So, I don't know. We'll just see how this goes. I have a feeling that the melted wax is going to make a mess. So I'm covering our craft table with this tarp, and then I'm putting the log back on. Also off camera, I set up our canopy just to keep the sun off of me while I'm working. That should help with the footage and remove some of the glare as well. Okay, I think I know what I'm doing. It's time to speed this up.
Well, my camera ran out of battery before the time lapse could complete itself. Here is the finished result. Let me show you up close. So all that we need to do now is raise this above ground level, keep it in the shade of the woods where it can get wet, and if there's ever going to be drought conditions, we need to make sure to submerge this in water for up to 24 hours so it can stay wet. Maybe I can put the email address down in the description for the company that we bought this from in case you guys have any questions. Wow, I just pulled our massive gorilla cart up the hill into the woods with these logs in it. I'm pretty sure the cart weighs more than the logs, but because this thing's covered in wax, I don't want my hands slipping all around it, knocking the wax off, because I'm pretty sure the wax is what protects the inoculated dowels while they kind of wait for the year for the mycelium to spread throughout the log as it decomposes. It's supposed to be stored somewhere off the ground or it can get wet, I think ideally I would build some sort of platform or shelf or maybe even just a rope hanging from a tree. I don't know how much motion affects the growth of mushrooms. Maybe I'll reach out to the company we bought these from and ask them. But for now, I'm just going to set everything on this table. These logs that are acting as risers are from the same tree that I just cut down. I don't think there's any risk of wild mushrooms finding their way into this log because these are freshly cut. They're going to decompose at the same rate as that one, and the, this one hasn't been inoculated by anything yet. So I'm rising it off this table just because we have no idea how old this picnic table is. It came with our property, and it looks like it's been here for years, so there could be mycelium in it, so it's probably best not to leave it in contact with our new log, even though it's coated in wax. Speaking of wax, we ended up only having a few tablespoons of cheese wax left. And the instructions specifically say to use cheese wax. And since we're almost out of it, we're gonna have to find some more cheese wax before we can proceed with our oyster mushrooms. So if you wanna see that in a future video, let us know in the comments. With the exception of the camera dying, it would probably be a very redundant video, doing the same things. It's the same amount of dowels. We need the same size log although we might want to use a tulip tree instead of an oak, just because we don't have a lot of oaks here that we want to cut down. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in mushrooms, let us know, because so are we. Maybe we can exchange ideas and educate each other. Otherwise, I hope to see you next time back here at Kind Heart Homestead. Thanks for watching. Bye.